Hello everybody, uh, my name is Elaine and I'm going to talk to you today about enlistment in the Great War and pose the question, why did Irishmen enlist in the Great War? Now that's not to exclude women that were involved in the Great War, uh, but the focus uh, this afternoon I want to put on men in the Great War. And the reason is, uh, roughly speaking, 210,000 Irishmen enlisted voluntarily to serve in the war. Now, of that, roughly about 60,000 were already serving in the British Army. So that leaves approximately 130 and 140,000 who did not. So what motivated them um, to become involved in a war where 35,000 approximately uh, Irishmen will die? Ireland was part of the British Empire at this stage. And with Britain's involvement in the Great War, Ireland becomes involved in the Great War. So when the Prime Minister of Britain declared war on Germany um, in, on the 4th of August 1914, that brought Ireland into the war. And in the immediate aftermath uh, of that announcement, uh, the uh, leader of the Irish Parliamentary Party in Ireland uh, stood up in the House of Commons and made the statement that England could withdraw her troops from Ireland and Ireland's coastlines would be defended by the volunteer movements on this island. And at that time, there was two volunteer movements, the Irish Volunteers or National Volunteers in the three southern provinces and the Ulster Volunteer Force in Ulster. And what he maintained was that armed nationalist Catholics in the south would be glad to join arms with the armed Protestant Ulstermen in the north, which would be good not merely for the empire, but good for the future welfare and integrity of the Irish nation. So in short, he saw the war as an opportunity for Protestants and Catholics, nationalists and unionists to stand shoulder to shoulder, if you like, to defend the coastline of Ireland. But very quickly, um, he soon realised that the coastline of Ireland uh, wasn't going to be attacked. And as he was coming home from a, a trip in uh, Britain, he spotted a group of volunteers training in the fields. He stopped the car, uh, stepped out, and he made a speech. And during that speech, he said that uh, it was unlikely that this island was going to be invaded. Um, so that really the volunteers uh, should uh, account themselves as men, not only in Ireland, but wherever the firing line extends. And of course, this is the moment where we see that if you enlist to serve in the army, you're going to end up, if you like, in the theatres of war for the Great War. So why does, uh, back to my original question, why would anybody enlist to fight in the war? And the general answer that's usually given to this question is money, um, or the king's shilling as it's referred to at the time. But when you look into the mindset of people right back uh, in 1914 and right through to 1918, we see that there's more than one reason uh, for people to enter into this war. And I've given you the figures at the very outset um, in terms of the number of people that were engaged, or number of men that were engaged in this war. And one of the ways that we can find out what motivated people is to actually look at how they were being targeted. Uh, if we look at the propaganda of war itself. In 1914, this is the kind of war propaganda you would have seen. Um, if you look at the very, very left one, um, it's calling out to all Irishmen, really, be honest with yourself. Be certain that your so-called reason is not a selfish excuse. In other words, don't be selfish. Get out there and fight in this war. Um, and enlist today. The middle one um, is actually a lengthy appeal from a politician, the politician John Redmond at the time, as I said, who was leader of the Irish Parliamentary Party. And these kind of wordy texts were not unusual at this time. People spent time in train stations, waiting for buses. Uh, they, they moved around the world much slower than we did today. So you could afford to have a lengthier poster or handbill. And this is where the politician or the well-known person uh, starts to appeal to young Irishmen to enlist in the Great War. And that is very effective. And we see it today even in terms of the use of influencers to get people to do things that we want them to do. If we um, move on, um, if that didn't work to get you into the war, uh, well, then we get a little bit more emotive, certainly uh, particularly as the war moves on. 
This one over here on your left hand side, uh, what you see in the foreground is a farmer. He's pushing his plough through his field. And it was actually rather difficult to get farmers or farmers sons to enlist in the Great War. Uh, and that was largely because actually wartime proves very beneficial for agriculture. Wars need food. Ireland was an agricultural country. And as the war plays out as well, news of the death toll uh, at the front begins to come home. So it gets harder to encourage young people to enter the war. So this is one way, it's an emotional appeal, if you like, um, and it's aimed specifically at the farmer. And what you see in that mounded heap there is the ruins of a Belgian cathedral. And one of the great calls um, of the, the church back at the beginning of the war was for Irishmen to get out and save Catholic Belgium, which was under attack um, by the Germans or by the alliance um, of the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. And then what you see behind him again, um, encouraging, is the ghost or spectre of St. Patrick um, calling on the Irishman to stand up and fight for the right of small nations. And that wasn't the only reason. It wasn't just an emotional appeal in terms of save Catholic Belgium or fight for your fellow countrymen. But you know, these were young men that you were trying to appeal to. So one of the other ways was to create fun. Um, you know, to show that going out to war meant that you were going to make friends. Uh, you could have pals. In fact, actually, you could have a great time. And that image that I'm showing you there on, on the right is, it's asking, will you make a fourth? They're sitting around, uh, you know, they've done their bit of battle in the war, they've come back to camp and they're having a great game of cards. You can join in that too, and you can have some fun uh, out in the war. And if that wasn't enough, um, and you really needed persuasion, well, there was nothing like the wife, the sister, the mother uh, to send you out to war. Um, if you look at the one on the right-hand side there, uh, you see the woman, and she's got the gun in the hand, and she's pointing over to the smoldering Belgium in the background and she's needling either her, her boyfriend or husband um, and she's saying to him like we might all say for the love of god will you do it or must i go out there and do it myself um, she's needling him to go to war and of course you have to appeal to all ages and all classes of men in this war so the one on the left hand side is not showing that the working class man or the farmer in fact it's the gentleman um, and he's looking at a soldier going out to war um, and he's going, right, uh, look at I'll go too. Um, and that's the real Irish spirit here. And that is the type of poster that was used across uh, many countries, uh, Britain and, and, and other countries as well. And the only thing that they actually changed was the sprig of shamrock got pulled out and the emblem of the other country got put in and it would have been the real British spirit or something like that. So there's a huge array of reasons why Irishmen enlisted in the Great War, uh, money being only one factor. The words of this war, um, and you see that in, in, in how the war was being described. Uh, as Keith Jeffrey, the historian, said, it was a war of big words. King, country, freedom, duty, democracy, liberty, and civilization. It was also the cause of small nations, and Ireland at that moment in time was fighting for home rule. In fact, it had actually attained home rule. It was going on the statute books, um, but it was being suspended for the duration of the war. So this, uh, you know, motivated uh, young men to show that Ireland could be a nation among nations uh, now that she was getting her independence. She could stand with her allies and she could go out and fight in the war. And they saw themselves as fighting for Irish independence by taking up this role. And there was the economic reasons. Um, there were hundreds um, of working class Dubliners, particularly or, you know, in the cities of Ireland at the time, who signed up uh, to fight in the war. Miles Duncan claims there was among 45,000 men who joined the various battalions of the Dublin Fusiliers over the four years of the conflict. And the soldiers got paid, but their, their wives and families at home got a separation allowance, which put income into the family as well. And a labourer uh, called James English from Wexford claimed that with separation allowances, he and his family were 154% better off once he was soldiering. 
And the other, and I, I'll finish on this one, uh, the other main reason uh, that young men in particular signed up uh, to fight in this war that was going to result in millions of casualties was because their friends were going. Uh, they were part of the rugby team, the football team. They were working in the, in the local factory and all the young men uh, on the team or in the factory were signing up. So they were going out with their pals. And not only that, they were going because it was adventurous. A lot of these people were in mundane jobs. This was it for the rest of their lives. Now here was an opportunity to get out of Ireland, see a little bit of the world, have new experiences, and it was going to be one hell of an adventure. What they didn't realize was that the adventure that was lying before them was trench warfare, years of horror, rat infestations, lice infestations, um, and, and really a very, very gruesome and prolonged war. Because bear in mind, at the very beginning, they thought this war was going to be a short one. It was not. The uh, Irish divisions fought in three main battalions, uh, the 10th, the 16th, and the 36th Ulster Division. And they uh, saw war, or action if you like, uh, on the Western Front in places like Gallipoli, um, in, in far-flung areas of the world. Uh, and they, they carried out their duties to, to a, a very high standard. But that resulted in a lot of death. And I'll just quote one historian uh, that kind of paints the picture of it very well. And he's talking about uh, the streets of Belfast after the Battle of the Somme in 1916. And he said, in the long streets of Belfast, mothers looked out in dread for the red bicycles of the telegram boys. In house after house, blinds were drawn down until it seemed that every family in the city had been bereaved. The casualty lists were full of familiar names. And what this tells us is the death toll. And we do see recruitment or enlistment reducing uh, for after 1916. Uh, 1916 and 1917 because of the death toll uh, and the horror stories that were coming home from the war. But it picked up again in 1918, which is really rather interesting. Why? Well, we were coming to the end of the war. Now young men were looking at this as an opportunity. They could go and they could train, they could learn new skills so they could build a different life after the war. And you see enlistment in the, in the Navy and in the Air Force particularly. So, um, while the heavy casualties did result in, in a little, uh, in a dip, should I say, there was a little rise uh, as we move into 1918. So um, <clears throat> that's the reason why Irishmen enlisted in the Great War. Thank you very much indeed.